Hey everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about environmental racism. It's just one person talking on the internet. Take take everything I say with a grain of salt. I should put that at the beginning. We're gonna start off with a couple disclaimers as well. First off, I'm not just talking about this because it's trending. I'm talking about this because I think it's really important and I actually had this video planned before everything kind of sparked up. This is something that really is weighing on my heart and I think needs to be talked about. Second, I'm not perfect and I could stop that disclaimer right there, but let me give you a little bit of backstory. <laughs> I grew up in a small Midwest town in the US of just two to 3,000 people, 99% white. I knew just about zero things about diversity until I moved out of my childhood hometown just three years ago, less than three years ago, I suppose, but I'm not letting that be my standard. I would never have claimed myself to be racist, but I was never actively anti-racist, and that's what I'm trying to learn. If I make a mistake, if I do something or say something wrong, please call me out because I want to learn. I want to be educated and I want to help as much as I can. I also understand and acknowledge that I am not a person of color. I understand that white privilege applies to me. I will never be able to fully understand what it is like to live in their situation. So yes, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Emma, I'm a self-proclaimed environmentalist and I talk all about zero waste and sustainable living. And one thing that's been, like I said, weighing on my heart recently is not just what can we do to reduce our waste, but the impacts that our actions have on the people and the planet. You know, everyone talks about quitting single-use plastic. And I agree, that's a great step. But what are the consequences to not quitting single-use plastic? And I explored that in a recent video. I'll leave it linked above and below for you. And then in this video, this one is particularly about carbon dioxide emissions and then more about environmental racism and we'll touch on that shortly. The goal with my channel, my website, my Instagram is to make zero waste fun, cheap, and accessible to almost everyone. I want my channel to be a place of inclusivity. I don't want anyone to feel left out here. I want everyone to feel welcome and just be one big, happy, sustainable living community. All that to say, I don't want to just discriminate anybody. I want to be a voice for positive change and positive action. And speaking of all inclusive, I will now be posting all of my videos that have actual scripts on my website and then I'll leave those linked down below. So if you are deaf, hard of hearing, or if you just simply like to read, you will have access to this material as well. So unfortunately, this does not go for vlogs. Anyways, I think that's enough of an introduction. So let's just jump into today's topic of environmental racism. I don't know what went wrong, but I lost some of my audio here. But basically what I was saying beforehand was that minorities are very poorly represented in legislature and they are not able to help make the laws to help fight issues that are actually affecting them. So that's what I'm getting at here. And it doesn't stop there. Minorities are just very ill represented throughout the entire world. It's not just in law, it's also in the environmental field. It's in fields like environmental science. It's a part of environmental organizations and environmental teams. Minorities are just poorly represented in these areas as well. So more representation across the whole board, not just in legislation, will really help their voices be heard. Remember how I said I was a self-appointed environmentalist? That's because I don't have a degree in environmental science. And guess what? You don't need one either. So here's a definition of an environmentalist. It is literally just a person who is concerned about the environment. That's it. You don't need a degree. You don't need to pay money. You don't have to look a certain way. Someone who cares about the environment. So now let me ask you a question. When you picture an, an environmentalist, who do you picture? What do they look like? I'd guess that you'd probably picture someone like me or someone at the front of the zero waste movement like Katherine Kellogg or Shel Bezel or Sustainably Vegan. You picking up on the trend here? When most people think of environmentalists, they think of young white women. Probably probably wealthy as well. Maybe not wealthy, but certainly not poor. So that's the issue as well. The stigma around environmentalism, the stigma around calling yourself an environmentalist, the stigma around the zero waste movement is focused on young white women. Maybe not young, but like 20s to 30s. It's not focused on people of color, of any color. It's not focused on men. It's not focused on old people. So it's, it's discriminatory in a lot of ways, not just skin tone, but it's heavily on skin tone as well. And this isn't just white people thinking that white people are environmentalists. Even people of color, according to studies, also think that white people are the ones that we call environmentalists. So link down below, I'll leave some of my favorite zero wasters who belong to one of these minority groups, people of color, people from different regions of the world, and not just white American women. The environmental movement shouldn't be bound by stereotypes. The fight for climate justice should not be set based on your skin tone. The fight against climate change and the fight against environmental racism should be commonplace for everyone. Everyone's voices need to be heard, but especially those of people of color. When it comes to environmental related disasters, we know that people of color and minority groups face the worst impacts. They're the ones who typically live in flood zones. They're the ones who typically live closest to dumps. Most housing in these types of communities aren't structurally sound either. They also tend to be the ones who receive the least amount of help before, during, and after a climate related event. Most studies conducted post hurricane, post tornado, post insert your natural disaster here are focused on sectors like water, energy, infrastructure, 
agriculture, basically the areas that bring rich people more money. In other words, they don't care about the people. And not only is it shown that people high up in legislature don't care about people in general, especially people of color and minorities, these minorities also receive less education on how to prep for such events. They also typically don't have means of evacuation. They also face lower social and economic status, as well as higher likelihood of living in somewhere hazardous, like next to a hazardous waste facility. Here's another question for you. I want you to actually pick an answer in your head and feel free to leave your answer down below if you wanna share. Out of all the different types of people in the world, who do you think cares the most about climate change? You can pick from any skin tone, any religion, any ethnic group, whatever, but find that group and put it in your head. Now that you've got that, think about how much you as an individual care about climate change on a scale from zero to 100. Here's what I'm getting at. For the first question, most people probably won't pick a minority group. They will probably pick white people. Whether this is just because white people are the ones in law with all the money, they must care about this, or whether it's because white people are at the front of the zero waste movement, that's unknown. But for the most part, whites and non-whites alike will pick white people as the people they think who care the most about climate change, but that's wrong. <laughs> I'll throw up some charts from the study that I found to show you what I mean. For the second question, most people belonging to a minority group answered significantly higher than the white people placed them at. On the other hand, minorities thought white people cared more than the white people actually do. So it's quite the opposite. So what I mean is that white people think that minorities are down here, but minorities ranked themselves up here. Minorities placed white people up here, but white people actually care down here. Of course, this is just based off one study. This is just an average. This is not, I'm not claiming that you fit any of these standards. This is all just based off one study. Basically, white people care less Less than other people think that we care, and minorities care more than whites think they do. All this to say, rid yourself of biases and preconceived ideas. We have never walked the day of a life in someone else's shoes. We don't know what it's like to be a part of a different people group. White people have no idea what it's like to be a person of color. And I think it's great that more and more people are, are sympathizing and caring and speaking up, but at the end of the day, we'll never truly understand what it's like. So as a society, we know that this happens, but what we need to do now is actually prevent it from happening. We need to undo some biases here. The first one is we need to undo the bias that you need a degree to fight climate change, that you need a degree to be an environmentalist. We need to forget about the bias that only women are involved in zero waste. We need to focus on every single person fighting for climate justice. We need to understand that minorities have the least impact on the planet, but they experience the biggest consequences. Yeah, white people have the most effect on the planet. So what can we even do as white people? What can we do about environmental justice and racial justice in general? The first one is to just listen. I don't mean listen to YouTube videos from white people. I mean, listen to your people of color friends. I mean, listen to your black friends, listen to your Asian friends, listen to people living across the world who are receiving our waste and are literally living in dumps from trash from America. Listen to stories about environmental racism, brutality, racism, whatever it may be, just listen to people. Open your minds, open your hearts, open your ears, and be actually willing to listen to their story without judging. Be slow to judge, be slow to anger, be slow to speak, and truly, truly listen to these people. Deeper than that, you can help a little bit more directly. If you're living in an area that's at risk for a hurricane, for example, don't just prep your house and get out of town. Drive down to the minority section of your neighborhood and see if people need help. See if people who live there don't have a car and an access to get out of the city. You can help with sandbags. You can help with relief after the disaster. You can help educate people and help them be able to better prep their homes for such a disaster. Just simply lend a helping hand. Next is to understand your place in society. Maybe maybe not your actual place in society. Well, yes, understand your actual place in society and also understand that we're all equals. White people are not better than anybody. I can't believe I'm saying this in 2020. That's just mind-blowing. Understand that even though you might have it hard as a white person, that white privilege still exists. It might exist more for some and less for others, but comparatively, white people are so much more privileged than people of color. Understand that white people, this is all generalized for the most part. I'm not, please don't get offended by this. It's just one person talking on the internet. Take, take everything I say with a grain of salt. I should put that at the beginning. Understand that white people are not currently facing the effects of climate change because most white people live in wealthy nations and most white people don't live in hazardous areas and minority groups are facing the most impact. Understand that white people contribute the most to climate change and then learn how you can reduce your impact. Another thing that you can do is to support our brothers and sisters of any given minority group. Read their books, support their art, support their small businesses, donate to charities that operate for people of color. You can even just simply advocate for people of color candidates. You can vote for people of color, sign petitions and donate to charities dedicated to minorities. This video is not meant to be about fighting for climate change. It's just to bring awareness to the fact environmental racism exists and that minority groups are facing the most 
harsh impacts of climate change right now. This all stems from centuries of discrepancies in the justice system, not just in the US, in the entire world. A centuries old problem that comes down to our current problem of climate change. And it's, it, it's just been weighing on me a lot recently. Racial injustice still exists. It's existed this whole time. How many things have happened because of racial injustice? So many people didn't know about it until now. I think that's what blows my mind the most. It just makes me really sad and heartbroken. Whether it was on purpose or on accident, we, most white people were ignorant up until this point to the issues that people of color are facing, specifically the black community. Minorities all around the world are at a higher risk of climate change just due to the color of their skin and some minorities based off where they live in the world. The color of their skin then impacts their social status, their representation in law, their representation in education, their abilities to get education, their representation in the environmental scene itself. This was I guess something that blew my mind the most is that the color of their skin impacts where governors and mayors build their, their dumps and their hazardous waste facilities. Uh, again, I'll leave some studies down below. This is actually proven fact that when people look at their city sector, they choose the minority neighborhoods to do this stuff in. The color of their skin also impacts how much they receive before, during, and after a natural disaster. Not only do minority groups, people of color, and particularly right now, black people, need systemic help, they also need social help. I mean, I'm not a political expert, I'm not any sort of expert, but I think that's where it all begins, is socially. Once we can all get over our biases and get over ourselves, that's when more systemic changes can take place. That's what I think personally. We need to help advocate for our brothers and sisters who belong to a minority group. We need to stand up for what is right and we need to stand up for them. Something else that kind of bothers me is that I feel like a lot of you watching this are like-minded as me. So clearly we're not the people who need our minds and our hearts changed. So if you found any benefit in this video, I would really, really appreciate it if you not only gave it a thumbs up, but also shared this video. Like I've said before, it, it does help support my channel, but that's not the goal. I don't want to, you know, become internet famous or anything like that. I truly think this message is important and needs to be heard by many people. So if you do find any value in this and in my channel, I would appreciate a thumbs up, a subscribe, and also if you shared this video. But I also feel like a lot of you are probably in the same shoes as me. You probably grew up in a small town in the middle of America and you probably are maybe still unaware of racial issues. Even if you aren't now, you probably were in the past. I am, I was shamefully unaware of what was going on in the world until I moved out of my small town. I'm not saying that you need to pick up your life and move 7,000 miles away from home, though that does help. Even just take a road trip, visit the minority areas of your city, and even just do some research. I cannot fix my past and fix all of the ignorance that I had, but I can shape my future. And I hope that's what you choose to do moving forward as well. I can change my mind every single day. I can learn more and do more. And that's the point of this channel. Honestly, a lot of these videos come from research that I've done myself that I thought was valuable, so I wanted to share it with others. I'm not an expert in all of these topics. I, I literally had to do a lot of research for this video because I was still unaware of a lot of this stuff. Yes. That is all I have to say. I hope that you, again, took everything I say with a grain of salt. Please do your own research. Don't just take the advice from one person on YouTube and don't get all upset about what I said because I'm just one white person on the internet. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it all to the end. Thank you for choosing to spend 15 or 20 minutes with me. I know my videos can be a little long, so I really do appreciate you watching. And until next time, just like with climate change, with environmental justice and racial justice, your small changes have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. I grew up in a small, rural, Midwest Ohio. Midwest Ohio. Why do I do that every time? I should get a drink. I just can't believe this. What is the words? Should, uh, it should be commonplace for everyone. Should be commonplace for everyone. The fight against climate change and the fight against racial environment. <laughs> the fight against climate change and the fight against environmental racism should not, uh, is everyone's fight. So what I mean is white people think, excuse me, Oh, stop the recording. We need to forget about the bias that only women are fighting. Fighting? We need to forget about our bias that only white women are at the front of the zero waste movement. We need to forget about the bias that only women are in it for zero waste.